All right, guys, it's early this morning, about a little after seven. I'm headed to Columbus, actually New Albany, in Ohio, to Bob Beach's Beach Performance. So it's about a two and a half hour drive, roughly, sometimes a little quicker, just depends on the traffic. So we're going there to put together the 409 Cleveland, which all we're doing is putting new rod bolts in and I got new bearings. I got sponsored by Calico. Thank you guys very much for that. I appreciate that. They're gracious enough to help me out with some bearings. BHJ is helping me out with a few other things. So I got some new sponsorships. So I wanted to share that with you guys. We're headed off to put the engine together, the old 409 Cleveland. So we'll see what we can do. Bob's gonna work his magic on it. 82 years old, I'm ready for it. All right guys, I'm here at Beach Performance. I walk in the door and what do I see sitting right in front of me is that beautiful looking crankshaft. So let's get that in the 351 Cleveland block. We are right here now, live, kind of live, at Beach Performance. So it's been about two months, about eight weeks and four days or so since I was here before when Robert and I tore down the 409 Cleveland, which is right here. Since I've been gone that period of time, we've got the parts ordered. Like I said, we're only going to replace the rod bolts and the bearings. Robert already has the block washed and ready to go. The bearings are set in here. Wait till you see this crankshaft. It really blew me away. Robert, have you ever seen a crank that looked that good? Never. He said he never saw a crank that looked that good, so I was just amazed. But I'll show you, we're getting the table set up where we're gonna put all the parts. Let me do a quick walk it around. Like, it looks like a Christmas tree. He said it looks like a Christmas tree. It, it really does, I don't, I don't know, I've never seen a crank this shiny. And uh, I know the oil won't be sticking to it. So let's get a view of everything, hold tight. It's got the coated bearings by Calico, they hooked me up with that, you can see. Robert smoothed out the bores just a little bit. Didn't even have to put it in the machine. He just used uh, dingleberry, I guess. Cleaned it up. It's good enough for us. We don't need to be messing around with it. He said there's nothing wrong with this engine or the damn pickup broke. So that's what we're getting back together. There's Robert cleaning the crank. Look at that thing. I've, I've just never seen a crank like that in my life. Well, yeah, I did. I saw it before we put it together. Boy, she's beauty. So that crank was repaired and cleaned up by Adney Brown, Performance Crankshaft in Michigan. Robert told me about him, so I contacted him. And you know what? He came right to my house, Drag Boss Garage, and picked up the crank. Took it right with him to Michigan. So I appreciate that, Adney. He, it was bent five. He straightened it. Oh, yeah, it was bent five. You're right. And the ground and rod drill is 10. There it is. So Robert's getting ready to... Oil down the bearings, and we'll start, we'll do some video, see what we can show you guys. Oh yeah. Bob, how long have you been building engines? At least 50 years. At least 50 years. I was looking back at the records. We built our first engine together, me and you. That was like 2005, a 385 Cleveland. Made 668 horse. It was the one that you told me, you better let me change those valve guides or you're going to have a problem. The valve's going to hang up. Do you remember that? Oh, no. Yeah. And what did I do? I took it to the dyno and what happened? The valve hang up in the guide. So, brought it back. Bob took it apart, put new bronze guides in those heads that I'm running right now. Cleaned it up. I don't even think we just cleaned up the pistons. We were ready to go. Best engine I ever had. Five years of beating on that. Yep. Oh, it weighs about 53 pounds, I think. We have to change that camera angle. Ready? Yep. Nice. nice. Look at that, baby. It's a beauty. Look at that thing. Spins like a dream, boys. So now we're back to work. So we're even reusing the rear main seal. Robert said it'll be fine and we're good to go. He puts a little sealer down here for the main cap. A little bit of reassurance. So the next thing we're gonna do, we got the main caps on. We're gonna throw these thickened washers, which for the stud girdle, put those in place. Pretty excited about this, Robert. 
the oil pan's not going to be done for a couple weeks, but that ain't no big deal. Mm -hmm. Probably a week. But, you know, they actually weld, they weld the pickup to the pump yeah. at Steph's, which right. I, I've never heard of. Right. They said it won't break this way, mm -hmm. vibration's eliminated. So I said, okay, let's do it. So I sent them two oil pumps to do, in case I need one or a spare or something. I got those oil pumps from Precision Oil Pumps in California. They hooked me up perfect. Grateful for that. All right, there you go. Yep, the oil pump drive shaft goes right through there when the time comes. Nice. All right, guys, so we put the special washers on to the main caps, then the stud girdle. And now we're putting on the main cap nuts, the main girdle. All right, guys, we're going to torque this in three steps. I think it was like 36, 72, 110. That's how I did it. It works well for me. So. This is the easy part. How's that Craig feel? So we got it up to 72, so some arm into it. I always worried about when I took things apart and put it back together like it's going to affect it. And I had this thing apart quite a few times and check things. Never change one thing on it. Didn't hurt one measurement, nothing. Got a rubber? Good. Put this up to 110. All right, so let's torque this thing up to 110. I'm gonna have to put the gloves on. I don't want to slip off. You better hold that engine because it's, it's hard. Yeah, it. All right. Got these power gloves on. You ready? I'm telling you, it ain't no country picnic. Hey, Robert. Break up a sweat, huh? There it is. Yep. And you did the and <laughs> you just click just right and you you pull it right up to click. You don't say, oh, never. One, one quick pull. One quick pull. pull. Stretch that bolt and click it. Yep, one pull. Yep. You don't want to sit there and shake. It's power gloves. you got to have these to tighten the mains. Just get 
Oh yeah. Just like it was. Like butter. Yep. Like butter. This, this is smooth. Nice. Let me check it. Should just each one around. Make sure they're loose. Yep. yep. Good side clearance. Yep. No tight ones, so you got it. Nice. So we're checking the thrust. Yeah, it's probably 5,000s right yeah, there. Huh? Oh, yeah, good. We could put a dial indicator and go up through all that, but you know what? Mm -hmm. We're giving it faith. You've given it 5,000. That's it. There it is. By the man, we're good. And I torqued these. When I torqued them, I was 36, 72, and 110. That's how I did it initially. So we'll take a look here. I kind of turned it on the side a little bit to get a view because we were kind of just going along. But, you know, we never had to put it in the hone other than use a dingleberry is, you know, what they call it. I mean, the thing came out perfect. It really wasn't that bad. He said, don't mess with it. You'll be fine. So I trust Bob and we're going to get it back together. I do have the Tim Meyer oil adapter. I put a little light on it so you can see in there. And you can see, look at that. That's how I clean mine out. Inside, you can see here. I wanted that wall right out of there. So that oil is just pushing past there. Seems to hold up. That's what we're going to do. All right, guys. So here's the connecting rods and pistons. They're all labeled 8765. So you remember how blue they were. Bob cleaned them all up, shot peened the areas, resized everything. He said they really weren't that bad at all. So we're even reusing the rings. He said they're not even broke in yet. He said run them. So that's what we're doing. We cleaned off most of the carbon and, and what we needed to. And we're ready to throw this baby together. He said it's going to run the same. And I said I'm hoping it runs a little bit faster. By the way, those are 312 pistons back there. It's kind of interesting. I've never even seen that before. You can tell they're an old cast piston. What we've got next is we're going to put the pistons and rods in. And like I told you, that bore, Bob cleaned them up. He said, run it, baby. Send it. They look beautiful. So we're just putting some oil in there to lube them up to get ready to push, put the pistons in. It's amazing how clean this thing is for a failure. It just There wasn't hardly any debris in it when you washed it and cleaned it, is there, Bob? No. Oh, yeah, look at that. So we're getting ready to put the pistons in. We stagger the rings. We got lube on everything. Now, what's that to kind of seat them, huh? It'll just make sure they are right. Yep, yep, I get it. Pretty good. Yep. Bring her home, baby. That's how we do it. Very nice. That's all she wrote. So the rod bolts are lubed up again. And like, I'm not going to film this whole assembly. We're just going to give you the ups and downs and the 
ins and outs of how this goes together. It's like being in an operating room with the master. So we got one, two in. This is number three getting ready to go in there and slide. Going towards the outside. Yep. Yep, I got it. <clears throat> That's a good little tip, though. Always squeeze that ring compressor and move it around a little. Always. Make sure those rings are not bound or caught, catch on anything. There, I can see it moving there. Those rings, they can get overlapped. That's good. The compressor rings and all, all, all the expander can get overlapped. Okay. Yep. What is that? It looks like green. Is that on Brad Penny you're putting in? It's Brad Penny. 90 weight. Oh, 70 weight Torco. 70 weight Torco. That's what you use to put them together? Yeah. Back in the day, I used to use Castro motor oil all the time. 2050, 2050. For 20 years until I met Bob. Bob told me that when he built his motor, my motor, he said he wants oil change to Brad Penn. So I've been running that ever since for over 20 years. Never had any issues with it. After you started building my engines, never an issue with oil. Always a part failure, if anything. So he had already checked all the clearances, and I'll put that out. But Bob said they were 25 plus, so probably 25 to 28. I doubt they're any more than that. That's what they were before, I think. And with those clearances, I mean, this engine's always ran, you know, cold, probably 70 five pounds of pressure warm 60 68 7 70 with it I rpm but i look back at my videos robert and i can see driving this car that i would have issues sometimes with oil pressure shaking when i come to a stop and i think what right before the pickup broke when it yeah, happened it could be. i think i was seeing sucking air in Yep. Gotta stop talking. Do a little twist there. Okay. Yep. What's your favorite engine to build? Do you have a favorite? They're all the same. Pretty much all the same. They're all the same. Nothing special that you like one versus the other. You like the big block Chevrolet. All right, there it is. Robert does like the big block Chevrolet. But he's kind of a Ford man. I don't know what. Are you a Ford man? Or, yeah, you told me you were once. Oh, sure. Or like me. You like them all. I, I like the 390s and 427s. Do you? And I'll tell you another thing. The guy that sold me that Jack Roush motor, which is not a Jack Roush motor, I talked to him the other day. In his attic, guess what he's got? Nothing but brand new NOS 427 FE parts. All brand new high riser heads, intakes, every 427 head, everything. He was collecting and buying them for years. He wants me to come up there and do a video and see a stash. You should go with it. You want to go up there? He said he's thinking about liquidating it. Keep going. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's thinking about liquidating some of that stuff. Hi, Mom. I'm back. We're home. Yeah, I'm home. There. It's 
twisted in there. You know what I mean? You got it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Lost car, I put my camera on it, and it was a wait a minute, game. wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. You're talking about that Mustang that I saw, yeah, 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 yeah. at Boss Cars, yeah, yeah. And so it was, yeah, it was a Boss 429. Yeah, yeah. They blew the motor up, yeah, yeah. like after I don't know 100 miles or something, yeah. right? Yeah, well, they tried rebuild it a couple of times, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we put my camera in that car, and it was a rocket ship, an absolute, I mean, rocket rockets ship. like high nines. And, and, Low then, and, then, and then, yeah, they, and yeah. They, in those in those days with tennis tires and stuff, yes, yeah. it was a low ten car. Okay, in those days, and that was a regular four twenty nine Mustang, Boss four twenty nine Mustang yeah, with a camera. Big car, yeah. yeah. With a with a camera. Yep. Yeah. With Dino Don, Thomas. Yeah, but that's the camera that I found, right? Yeah. 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 The, Remember the one I found in that garage? Oh, yeah. Ten grand I could have had it, but I, and I had to, I could have took out a little loan. I, I wanted it, but I didn't. I, I couldn't get the in, inside track. Well, I didn't know you wanted it. I saw my buddy came and picked it up. Ten he, grand. He, he, he's I, sitting on it. I don't know what's going on in that car. Hang on. He's he he he's he's one of those guys that buys shit and doesn't do anything. Yeah, right. You got it. Yeah, he just got it. He just wants it. Yep. So, if you're listening, Paul, you better do something with that. He's got a 40 Ford coupe and a Mustang, 69 Mustang. But anyhow, They're rusty, but yeah. You know, Don and Don got us the only tunnel round that ever got loose to the public. The only one. Man, I, and I took pictures of it. What, what, it was custom what, made. What, prototype. Custom made with the, with the pipes. Yes. Exhaust pipes for, yep. for runners. Yeah, I walked into that place and there's a camera sitting there in a grocery cart from air cleaner to oil pan. Yep. And then the, the funny thing is, Bob bought that motor in what year, Bob? 1966? I was 68, probably. Because I saw the receipt you showed me. Yeah, 68. We still got the receipt for it. $2,400, brand new from Ford. In the, in the crate. You know, where they were going at one time for like 800 bucks yeah, or 1000 at Home and Movies Auction. Yeah, way down there, yeah. Way down. And I'll have to show these guys. They've seen it before, but there's a camera sitting right over there. And a Boss 302. Come pick up that Boss 302. It's for sale. Fire sale today, 15K only. All ready to go, right, Robert? All new parts. Fresh. Yeah, runs OEM perfect. Fresh, yeah. New there OEM parts. Yep. So if anybody wants it, let me know. That camera, you may have to sell that too, huh? Yep. That's probably no cheap engine right there. What are those things, 75? Yeah, they're probably. Yeah, they're, 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 well, you had another, you sold one, you sold one to Rikers, yeah, right? Yeah, sold one to Rikers, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. I remember that. One that was stone cold, bones, everything original, stock, everything. You know, had the magnesium valve covers. Yeah. And, you know. and they have it in a museum. Yeah, yeah. So I talked to Pete, Pete Riker. He has a, they just got a new 64 lightweight yep. with a 427 in it. Yep. He was showing me a picture and I put a little short on that. So next week I'm going to be going out to his shop. If everything works out. 427 high rise. Yeah. And that guy's got all those new parts. 427 stuff I was telling you about. Or a twist a little, Robert. Give her a little twist. Rotate it just a tiny bit um, counterclockwise. Well, Bob, I see you're using that 70 weight. <laughs> Why do you use that and not assembly lube like on the bearings? What's your thought on that? This oil is not assembly lube. It's oil. 
It's a real thing you're saying. Yeah. You've never used assembly lube, really? No, not on the burner. They just, just, they just have an argument just on it. Can I turn it? We'll be, we 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 got to, we got to, we to, we got 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 Taboo. Yeah, that stuff hardens. I've seen people use that on stuff. Intake gaskets and stuff. No way. There's there's seven way oil. It's natural. Let me see that thing. We'll show the crowd here. Nitro seventy. Jesus. Oh, so it is pen grade. Yeah, yeah. So this is nitro. Yeah, nitro. For nitro methane. No. So here's what Robert uses to assemble his bearings, right there, Nitro 70. So, you know, he's like me in the fact that when we find something that works, we stick with it. So I always say my mantra is, do what works for you. If it doesn't work for you, then don't do it. Yep, we're good there. Yeah, sure. All right, guys, so let's get the camera in here. You saw the pistons going in, and we're going to get ready to torque the rods. But, yeah, this is looking good, man. I am pretty psyched. Going together very well. Spins so easy, it's not even funny. So here's a little bit more. Let's see. Right there is Tim Meyer's adapter. And you can see how I've ground it all down and how it turns that corner. I could probably even do a little bit more. And then this one here, you can see here, Clean that baby up. And that's the one of the main problems, I think, with oiling on a Cleveland. Not only that, but also the returns. you got to open up these returns. People complain about, oh, it's filling up the valve covers, blah, blah, blah. But you can see here where I've had to grind this down and open this up quite a bit for the correct drain back. I think this side was pretty good. Let's see. Robert's going to head test it now to see what it takes to draw it, to rotate it. What's that, Robert? It turns over 12 pounds. 12 pounds. Yep, 12 pounds. It doesn't take anything to break it loose, it just goes. Nice. 12 pounds. We'll take that. Nice, Robert. 12 pounds. 12 pounds it is, baby. Nothing to break, it doesn't take anything to break it loose. Maybe, maybe, maybe 15 to break it loose. But it rotates, Nothing. It rotates at 12. Very nice. It's good enough for me. Let's roll it together. Hold on. Snugging them. Yep. We're going to have to, have to rotate the corners. I could hear something. I said, someone's coming. <laughs> okay. I just got done torquing the rods, which I... I don't know if I turned the camera on. We'll find out, but I don't think I did. But either way, they turn well. It looks good. I'm telling you. And you got your 110 torque here, right? Yep. 110? Yeah. It's 72. Yep. And 
that's nice. All right, guys, so here's the bullet roller that I had made. This is a custom roller ground with some specs I got from Dino 2000 and with help from Mark from Bullet. 744, 727. It's a 109 intake center line, and it's in it. It came out to like 105.5 with 273, 284 duration. While you guys are watching this, I'll give you a little sneak peek. We all like to see this. Boss 302 sitting here. 15 grand if anybody wants it. Runs fresh, ready to go. I think it's got the correct distributor and carburetor, everything. If you want to open up your pocket bit, book more, take this camera home. It's got to go. He's got a new project he wants to work on, so the camera's got to roll. Thanks, guys. Check out Drag Boss Garage for more details.